If you guys aren't running an automated plot manager, you absolutely have to get in on that, especially if you're kind of even partially serious about mining or farming Chia. It's super necessary. It's gonna speed up your plot times. And I'm about to share with you guys my configuration settings to get the fastest possible performance out of your system. What's up guys, Austin here. I'm here with a new video to talk about automated plotting, okay? If you guys have been mining from the GUI, stop. Just, just stop. It's, you're wasting opportunity. With the net space growing so fast, basically, even for me doing 120 plots a day, the net space is growing so freaking fast now. You like, we need all the help that we can get. And for all of you that are plotting straight from the GUI, like my best advice for you to like increase your plotting potential is to switch to an automated plotting manager, okay? So the one, I've tried both. There's two big ones, there's Plotman and there's Swores. I've mostly used Swores. I started tinkering with Plotman recently. They're both great, but I think Swores is a little bit easier set up and it also works across different platforms. So what it does is it just looks at those logs, it manages it and basically helps fire off another plotting event once one finishes. And it just keeps going and it stacks them up for you. But the thing is, there are configurations and optimizations. You guys have probably heard of the term staggering, which is don't fire all your plots off at once. You kind of wait a little bit um, to figure out when, and you like wait and delay a few minutes or an hour to, to kick off the next one so you're not putting all of the stress on the system at once. But a lot of this is a little ambiguous. When I was first started and I was trying to figure out basically what kind of settings I should put in there. There was a lot of discussion, a lot of conversation, but no one really gave me like a, a, a good guide and I couldn't figure it out. And it took a lot of trial and error to figure out what kind of settings were best for my two systems. And I'm gonna share them with you now. So before we jump into SWORS and the configuration file, I just wanna bring up this one spreadsheet over here to share with you guys, to kind of give you an idea of like what opportunity you might have going for you. Uh, if you go with this automated plotting, all right? So let's just take a look. This is, I think I've shared this with a few of you guys. You've seen it in one of my other videos, but this is like my plotting optimization calculator. And it helps me project and get an idea of how much plotting I can probably do with my systems if I build them up, okay? I've used this to help friends build systems and it's a pretty useful tool. I'm gonna share it in the description below. So don't forget to, uh, if you need to check it out, go, go ahead and do that. But the way it works is like, let's take a system um, that you want. It's basically based off of cores and then the cores will help drive basically how many different, like how much you can run in parallel and how much you should ideally stagger. So let's say I have 12 cores in a Ryzen 5900X. That's the system that I just built, right? If I'm going balls to the walls plotting and I wanna use up all, tw uh, basically all 24 threads, right? I don't wanna go more than that. I don't wanna oversubscribe because that can cause issues. But if I wanna get to about 24, right? I always recommend leaving one core available so that it can do other processes. It can help with transferring the files. It can, you know, manage it. Just, you know, you're not running on the one, like the edge of it. Okay. And so if you have a total number of max jobs for the total, um, you're going to also look into phase one. And so phase one is, if you guys aren't aware, when you're doing plotting, phase one is the one that's multi-threaded. It uses more than one thread every other phase is single threaded okay and so to give you an example if we just take one plotting example we assign let's say four threads to it then in phase one it's going to use four threads and then in phase two three and four it's going to use one right and so then what happens is you need to figure out how you can stagger and manage this in a way that allows you to really maximize those threads because if you fire a lot of people i see this when they do it from the uh, the GUI, they fire like four plots all at once. And then what's happening is they're, you're working the CPU like crazy in that first phase one, cause all those threads are working. And then phases two, three, and four, your system has a little bit of energy and a little bit of life and it's just chilling there. And there are ways to kind of overlay and stack that so that your CPU, you're basically squeezing more performance out of your CPU. The ratio that I like to use for the max, to figure out max jobs in phase one is I, I usually try to target about 
uh, 40% of your total available cores and rounding down, but you can tinker around with it, right? So in this case, we're gonna say four, right? And with four jobs in phase one, if that's running, right, then you're using four threads. So it's using a total of 16 threads in phase one, right? And then you're gonna have to allocate a little bit for the rest of it, right? So if you have a total of 11 jobs running, Four of them are in phase one. So then if you assume that you're staggering and you have another seven threads, right? Or seven jobs and they're each using a single core, that's where you're getting this thread number from. Then you're looking at total usage of your cores here, which is 11 and 23 threads, which is one more thread than, you know, what you subscribe here. And that's how it works, right? That's how you can figure out Okay, am I using more threads than available total? Uh, is it more than what I want to go for? And you can play around with this. You can go, okay, let's say there are, I want to use three jobs in phase one. Look at that, right? So now I'm using three jobs. That's going to use 12 threads. And then I have eight other threads that are going to be working. And so with that, my total usage is 20. And you know, if you're running a system or you're multitasking and you're using that computer for things other than plotting, it might be useful to go down to three, right? Because then you have four threads available to you and hopefully that will free up a little bit of your resources. You can do things like surf the internet, but you know, depend, it really depends. But this whole thing allows you to play with your settings to get an idea of like, how many threads you're gonna use and you can map that out and plan it out so that you can input it into your configuration. Okay, the next part is gonna be right here about plotting time. And so this helps you figure out a stagger. Um, you're gonna take basically how long it takes you to finish one plot and or I guess multiple plots in parallel uh, and you're gonna estimate. And so if you've been plotting and you notice that it takes you six hours to finish a plot you can put that six in and basically this will tell you that you're you should probably stagger about 30 minutes between each plot and then it will help you figure out like how many plots a day you the other thing is it'll tell you how much ram you're using or you need how much temp ssd space it'll help you figure out all of those things you can also change your threads if you really wanted to and change that number to see how many more parallel i actually recommend four that's what i've been working with and I've seen a lot of good performance there. I think the trade-off is, is beneficial to go commit to four. And so now I wanna talk about the actual SWOR configuration guide. Um, if you guys haven't installed it, go through the installation process. You're gonna get this config.yaml file. It's just a configuration file that SWORs and the plotting manager uses to read and understand the settings. Okay, I'm gonna give you mine my super secret sauce you guys already kind of have an idea of it because of how that spreadsheet works that acts those numbers feed into this configuration file okay and so i'm going to share that right now you want to take a look here so these are the basic settings you're going to have where your chia you know file and exe file are located you're going to have your you know wherever you want to put your log file all that jazz next thing we have i think is if you want to set up some notifications and stuff but for me you know i don't use any of that so for once we get to global this is when the settings start to kick in and this is where everything starts to matter okay so max concurrent right um this is on my threadripper system so i have 30 set and then if you want to take a look here let me see if i can pull these up this guy so we're going to pull that to the right and then where'd that go pull this which is in full screen to the left so you guys can kind of see how this works all right so let's say i have a thread ripper it has 32 cores right my max job is going to always be one less in theory one less but in this case i actually only i'm only running 30 because i need to use this computer when i work too and edit videos so i want a little bit of juice still phase one is going to be about 40 percent right so there's 12 12 is a like in the end I'm using 66 threads that's way too many that's more than my actual CPU so I actually t tailored it down to 10 and so now I'm using 60 threads and that's where you're getting that time for phase one right there 
Um, and then, yeah, max concurrent. I have a small stagger between jobs because I'm doing different SSDs. Um, I threw six in here, but it really depends on obviously how fast you're plotting. If you really want to nail, if you really want to nail it, right, you're going to take your plotting time. So with that, then, you know, you put in the 12, it looks like I have a 22.5 minute stagger. So what I do is I actually have a minimum minutes between jobs. That's six. And then you'll look at the bottom when I ha look at the individual jobs, they also have a stagger of about 16 minutes. So that pans out to about 22.5 or 22 minutes, uh, which is close enough. Basically, the idea is you don't want to wait too long because you want to get, especially if you have multiple NVMEs, you don't want to wait too long between each job because you want to kind of get them firing. But I don't want to fire all four, like four at a time. I want to stagger it just a little bit to help improve that performance. So scrolling down a little bit more. So these are the settings. So each job is, I like to think of it as like if you have one NVME, each like one NVME, you can kind of assign a job to each one. Um, some people you can split it up, but that's the way I keep it organized. So like you look here, my first NVME, I have a P4510 and in there, there's a directory that it, it runs in. It's my H drive and it moves everything to my buffer drive, which is this plots file uh, located on the B disk. But the settings that you guys probably need to pay attention to are threads, which should be four. Uh, buckets is 128 memory buffer uh, you can go with 3600 I use 4000 because I have that extra RAM available to me and then max concurrent so this is how many you want to run on the NVMe I think eight is really the max you want to go it starts to actually bottleneck a little bit so if you can keep it to seven or if you have less that's actually probably a good thing actually one thing though because my p4510s are really big they're four terabytes in size so if you have a smaller nvme right like let's say you have one terabyte then you're going to want to keep that number at three because three times 250 that's 750 gigs uh and that's about as much space as you can plot unless you really know how to stagger and go to four but i would recommend three early start early that basically means that like if it hits phase four do you kick off something earlier um definitely read the notes here and read the stuff in the swords repo they do a really good job of explaining like what these different things mean and by the way, guys, if you found this content super interesting and helpful, do me a huge favor and click that subscribe button. It really helps the channel out. And it also lets you know when some of the new videos are coming out, which I have a lot planned. We're gonna be talking about the new pool. We're gonna talk about uh, more optimization configuration stuff. And we're gonna keep you up to date with all the things that are going on with Chia, okay? So jumping back into it, right? So here's that 16 minute stagger that I talked about and it kind of pans out to that 22.5. And so, you know, that staggering really helps overlay your CPU from like working way too hard in phase one. It really kind of helps spread out the workload. Now, max for phase one. So we have this number, right? And so in my case, it's 10. But if you're gonna have, that's 10 across my entire system right with swords it's a little tricky you gotta do a little bit of manipulation here to get it to that 10 number if you or whatever max jobs you have set assigned especially if you have multiple mvmes uh and the second you get more than two it starts to be a little tricky right because you gotta do some some division and some kind of estimations there um if you have two it's pretty easy you know, you'd have like five and five in this case i have three on one i have three in another and then i have two for these others um and that's just how my system works it's uh the only way that i can get it to you know sync up with the way that i want it but that's it honestly that those are the key things for for using swars hopefully this configuration that i've shared with you is pretty helpful uh you know you're going to rename it some different things there's other videos out there that kind of really walk you through the installation guide if that's really something that you guys want to see leave a comment and i can i can set it up and do a tutorial with you guys but i think the content that you're going to find on their repo and how to install it are all pretty straightforward all right and so that wraps up this video. If you guys are excited about what you can do with automated plotting, that's great. Like these tools are really, really helpful and they can really help optimize your plotting process. So definitely check them out. If you found this configuration settings, hopefully if you're, you know, you've just started getting into Swords and you didn't really know what to do with your configuration, hopefully this is helpful. I, like I said, just to summarize once again, 
four threads, 3,600 gigabytes of RAM to each one, figure out how many maximum plots you wanna do in phase one, and figure out how many thread allocations you can use using that Excel spreadsheet, which I'm gonna, or Google share sheet, which I'm gonna share with you uh, down in the description below. If you have any other questions, feel free to join our Discord. You know, we try to respond to it as quickly as we can, but if you have questions about configurations or anything else like that, hop in there, fire away, or leave a comment. I'll try to respond to those as well. But that's it. Hopefully you guys have a great evening. We'll see you in the next video.